What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Long Days. Elon Musk. Elon Musk and Elon Musk and Elon Musk. This is a good time if you want to commit a mass murder or you wanted to take over a country or if you wanted to get away with grooming or whatever evil you're into. Right now, do it because the news is completely preoccupied with whether we're returning to a Nazi digital landscape. Uh, Joy, what's her name? Joy Reid. What's her name? Joy Reid from MSNBC. Sean King are very concerned that uh, Elon Musk is a white supremacist and Twitter is now in the hands of a white supremacist. I haven't seen this tenuous a connection between Elon Musk buying Twitter since uh, since the slap, since Hollywood's 9-11 where white supremacy was blamed for the slap. But hats off, whenever you can try to tie white supremacy to something, I'm always listening because I believe it's entertaining. And Elon Musk, welcome to the white supremacy crew, my friend, because you may not have been a white supremacist before you bought Twitter, but now that you're uh, seeking to enforce free speech, welcome to white supremacy club, my friend. The, the club is bigger. It's like It's like... Pronouns and bathrooms, they grow every day. White supremacy is a group that's just, they're multiplying like bed bugs. Um, Johnny Depp, wow. If you're not watching that trial for entertainment, I don't know what you're doing. It's better than any movie, any podcast right out now. Um, you got to watch it. Amber Heard seems like a real good time, and it's all fun and games until someone shits in your bed. <laughs> the Russians have just released a Marine in a prisoner exchange, which is weird because we're not at war with them, which makes me really nervous. And poor Brittany Griner, she's still sitting in a uh, man-sized cell because no ladies can fit. In, uh, she can't fit in a lady's cell. So they got her in like a real plus-size cell, and she's still sitting there, I believe. Um, I believe the Russians agreed to this prisoner exchange because what they got in return is a Russian uh, naval pilot who was set to do 20 years in Connecticut. And I think the Russians gave us back this Marine who I think was set to do nine years in prison for whatever, for being American and eating McDonald's, whatever they'll throw you in prison for. And I think they did the prisoner exchange because he was a pilot. And I think the Russians just need all hands on deck right now because their military is not doing great. So they will take a pilot if they can get him. So that's happening. Disney. Uh, Florida is saying no more tax exempt status for you, my friend. We are dissolving your self governing abilities. Okay. And people in Orlando are probably cheering because it's a red state, but then they're also realizing, oh, fuck, I'm going to lose my job, dog. If Disney leaves Orlando, Orlando, what is Orlando? I mean, what's going to hurt worse? Shaq leaving Penny getting hurt, Hardaway, if you're a basketball fan, or Disney leaving Orlando. I don't know if they can handle all three happening, all three things happening in the last 50 years. So please work something out. Just please stop touching kids if you are. Um, another thing that expands every day, pedophiles. Pedophiles and white supremacists are under every pillowcase. Um, Fauci has said that the pandemic is over. We've ended the pandemic phase. Uh, well, will somebody tell Portland, Seattle, Madison, Wisconsin, and parts of New York City about that? Because I just got yelled at for not having a mask on. This is long days. My special will be released in early May. I will be in Cleveland, May 5th through the 7th. Get your tickets and always remember to search and seek to find out what's the Dallas. Well, what can you do? It's been a little while since we did a little What's the Dillas segment because we've been switching up between 
episodes with Jared and episodes with me at the desk. We don't want to keep anything consistent. Why would anything be consistent right now? Nothing is consistent. People flip-flop on what they say all the time. So I'm changing up the podcast. Next week, I'm going to do it with the girl who I meet on this chat right now. In fact, my next podcast is going to, I'm just going to get on a dating site and try to meet a podcast partner. And I'll just be like, you know what? I want to switch it up. I want to switch it up. Who knows? Maybe I'll just I'll just give the podcast to Jared for a month. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? A little residency? A little residency. Let's switch it up. If you would like to do my podcast, <laughs> please go write a review on Apple. And the best one on Apple, when I see the Apple reviews on Apple, whoever has the best review will be the winner of my contest, which is to host my podcast. So that's what you're going to win. And in fact, I think we should do that for fun. Why the hell not? We'll have one episode where we'll pick the best review on Apple and whomever that is will come in and do an episode with Jesse and it'll just be fun to watch. Imagine they nail it. Oh yeah. Imagine they're so good that people are like, they don't want this podcast back. They're like, we found the real delicious maniac and it's not Yanni. Comment roulette is back up. Could you say the word podcast when you get a chance? I think I maybe said it too many times. Is that what they're saying? Fuck Apple, white supremacist fuck. Okay, that's what happens with comment roulette and you look down. Um, the only way World War III, three is taking place is Uncle Paulie's kids vote blue. So what they're basically saying is there will be no World War III because Uncle Paulie's kids will never vote blue. It's not going to happen. Um, I had a great little swing. We went, uh, first of all, uh, Jared definitely had COVID because Jesse got COVID and Jesse gave it to his girl so um, I don't know if you listened to the last Patreon episode of patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days where you can get an extra episode every week. If you're not supporting the show, then you're not supporting free speech. And if Joy Reid heard me say that, she would say, that's a dog whistle. <laughs> it's a dog whistle. It does seem that white men are the happiest about this Twitter. I don't know why we split everything up like this into white men and BIPOC. That's all it is. And what does BIPOC mean again? Bisexual, indigenous, people of color. Anybody but a white man. Anyone but a white man. How don't we just say it like that? Instead of calling them BIPOC, just say anyone but white. Everyone except white. Because white is not right. White is wrong. Why don't we just call it wrong? Anyone who's not wrong. Um, so it's been a great week for Elon Musk and all the white men celebrating. <laughs> it is true. I can't deny that. I mean, you go on Twitter and the white people, they have not been this happy since like the Rolling Stones said they were touring again. I mean, it's a real, <laughs> I mean, white guys are really, you know, they are really excited, dude. It's like hockey season. <laughs> They're very happy. Um, because I guess they feel like they've been discriminated against in this new culture where s calling someone a white guy is now pejorative in some sense. If someone goes, if they go, of course, I should have known a, a, a white guy said it or I'm watching. What else would you expect from a white guy? All you got to do is replace the word white guy with Jew and you understand how Jew became a pejorative. <laughs> it's the same exact way. Someone in the comments is going right now, Yanni, are you comparing what has happened to the Jews to white men? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I, I understand there's a difference, but I'm saying, I'm just saying the anatomy of it. If you just do the mathematics, when you stereotype any group or generalize any group, you're basically discriminating. And I feel like white guys right now is the safest. It's just the easiest discrimination. And I get it because they did a lot of discriminating. White guys were really good at discriminating. And so now they're getting it. And also like white guys have done very well. White guys have done very, very well. So I get, even when they get discriminated against, they just go like that. They go, okay, okay. What? Someone said something on Twitter. Uh, okay, whatever. I'm going to go back to being a lawyer or whatever they are. Like, so they're not, they're not in a bad place yet. But if we can create these white guy programs, which um, would be fun. I'd like to see white guys go into some Japanese re-education camps. <laughs> They'd be playing fun games. 
there'd be uh you'd have the white immigrants playing backgammon white immigrants love backgammon so do dominicans but Greeks love backgammon. I feel like Romanians, Greeks, they'll be playing backgammon in wife beaters. The Italians will be cooking good <laughs> in the white guy programs. The wasps will figure out a way to have tea hour. They'll have tea. They'll have, they'll smuggle in really good whiskey. There'll be classical music playing. For the younger whites, they'll be mosh pits. Um... It'll be okay for the whites in there. They'll figure it out. It'll be like a blue. Co it'll be like a white collar prison, a program, a white guy program, re-education camp, where you have to renounce your whiteness by getting by. And the way they torture them is by just you open up the white guy programs in in Arizona, and you just there's no shade. That's the perfect torture. <laughs> they just get roasted. Just, there's no shade. <laughs> so burned to there's death. no shade, dude. That's the way you pay back. Yeah. We do that. If we did that for like a year, could, could then we could stop talking? Like, can we just move past stuff or no? Harvard right now is investing a hundred million dollars to atone for their role in slavery. So, um, I like that. You know, put your money where your mouth is, you know? They got it. Start handing out. Start handing out the dough. You know? And listen, Ottoman Empire. Take a take a little page out of their book. And all Greeks are asking for, we're not asking for a hundred mil. We're just asking for you to get your fucking greasy paws out of Cyprus. That's it. We just want you out of Cyprus. Is that too much to ask? Cyprus is an island. They've occupied half of it. Who's they? The Turks. And I can say it as a pejorative too. The Turks. <laughs> Generalizing people's, you know, it's just fun to do. It's never going to go away. You're never going to be able to, you know, not have fun with Greeks and Turks or white guys doing different things and black guys doing different things and Chinese guys doing different things. People like to do different things. And so you're going to, there, there will be fun had at people's expenses. But if you can get a little reparations for it, why not? They were supposed to get 40 acres in a mule, which is a nice deal. No other country who's ever enslaved people have, has offered them anything, right? No enslaved people have gotten any reparations for anything, I don't think, in the history of the world. The U.S. government, I think, at some point had floated the idea, right? But I don't think it went through or something. Or maybe they gave it to a few people and it, then it stopped. I don't know what happened. I'm not versed on it at this moment, but um, it, they did float the idea. So I think now Harvard is going for it. Harvard's going 100 mil, which for Harvard is probably a drop in the bucket, right? But this is just for research. What are they researching? Yeah, I love that. I love when they go research. Research and investigations are my two most favorite phrases. Whenever you go, we're launching an investigation into that. Make zero mistake, there will be no result from the investigation. Anytime there's a panel that's set up to look into something and investigate it, they come up with nothing. Whether it be 9-11, the JFK assassination, whatever it is. All they're doing is a it's a PR, it's a PR move to sort of just appease everybody. And they go, we're putting $100 million into research. You, you know what? If I was black, you know what I'd say? I'd be like, yo, fuck the research, dog. Just hand me 50K and I'm good. <laughs> How many black people could you like divvy that up for 100 million? You could probably pass around a lot of loot, 100 mil. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be nice. Take care of the Red Hook projects. That would take care of the Red Hook projects. <laughs> um... Uh, to, yeah, I mean, 50K each, baby? 50K each. Enslaved men and women served Harvard's presidents and professors and fed and cared for Harvard students, researchers found. Is that what you found with your $100 million effort? Moreover, throughout this period and well into the 19th century, the university and its donors benefited from extensive financial ties to slavery. Yeah, that was kind of the whole point of slavery, was for everyone to kind of benefit financially so um harvard you're not unique man everybody benefited from it but that that happened then 
from its school's founding in 1636 to 1783. The only thing that's kind of weird about this to me is like, if you're alive now and you're a faculty member at Harvard, or if you go in Harvard going like, yo, dog, I'm alive now. I, I don't, I, why am I being found responsible for something that happened between 1636 to 1783? You know, unless someone's willing to cake up the money. <laughs> If they want to give the money, that's fine. If the government wants to give the money, I'm good with that too. You know? Your, I don't know. This that, is a complicated thing. That's your taxes though. That is. But not if it goes through Harvard, right? Well, you Harvard is like private donor. Pull it from their endowment. Oh, they pull it from the, they pull it from the endowment. Well, they can. But they can't, but that's so that still stays within Harvard's money. I don't care what Harvard does with the money. Yeah, if they if I start having to be taxed for it, um, I have to say I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> even though my family had nothing to do with it, we weren't here. And even if they did, who gives a fuck? I mean, you know, some people are related to fucking people who did crime. Are we going to fucking hold them accountable? I mean, what can you do here? But I do acknowledge that, you know, they got fucked and that really messed up an even playing field. I do get that. I understand that. But I also think it's cool that that's even being acknowledged here. Because the thing everyone needs to realize is like, this is, slavery has happened in a lot of places. You know? People got fucked everywhere. So at least give America credit that they're going like, hey man, maybe we should fucking, at least Harvard, give 100, 100 uh, mil into it. I know if I was black, I would feel differently. That's why, that's what a lot of people don't do. You got to put yourself in the shoes of other people. If I was black, I'd be like, yo, 100 mil? Give me 500 mil. I'd be pissed. I'd be, if I was living in Greece and the Turks were about to say, we're going to give you reparations, i say, fuck you. And oftentimes in wars, countries do pay reparations for the damage that they did. The Germans did. The Germans did. After World War I, probably, probably a mistake, a little too much. And then they got pissed. That's the thing. If you take all whitey's money, then maybe whitey, then this maybe reinforces white supremacy. White supremacy is fucking on the rise. <laughs> It's always on the rise. They took down another white supremacist, the lives of TikTok. That page was always just reposting videos of like people saying crazy stuff on the left. Um, Jacob Sagart in Comment Roulette says, will Harvard dish out money to Asians that were rejected because their SAT scores were too high? Mm. It's a good question. One of my favorite controversies is that one because it's uh, nobody knows what to do with that one. <laughs> because uh, if they just left it up to the standards, I mean, all the schools would be all Asian. But Asians are being discriminated against for that reason. And um, They know how to take a test. They, do they know how to take a test? I mean, they do. I mean, they really do. But I don't know. I had a good time in Los Angeles. Um, had a great time doing all those podcasts. There's some good ones still coming out. We were in Phoenix. That was fun. Um, going to Phoenix. You know, if you if you want to like get divorced and get a new life, you go to you go to Phoenix. Why Phoenix? Because that's just where you see like white dads starting over. <laughs> <laughs> they just go. It's either like divorced dads, elderly white people, and like of course, Mexicans. That's the combination in Arizona. Right. You see old people, they're all in these like condo communities that have like community rooms and pools and they're all old. And then you see just divorced dads in their 60s with like a 40-year-old blonde, you know, <laughs> with fake tits. There's a lot of blondes there. A lot of like sun-baked blondes. And it's a wild place. Like Scottsdale is like the rich, it's another city, but it's like considered Phoenix because it's so close. And it's like the party place where there's like, where like being a bottle girl is like a career. <laughs> it's like a career. And they're fun because it's, it's somewhat like Miami in that there's no pretension. Like people are just looking for sugar daddies and guys are looking for pus pus. And it's a pretty even exchange. And no, there, it doesn't seem like a particularly woke place. It's kind of just primal bassist, you know, quid pro quos, pussy for money, and vice versa. It's kind of what Scottsdale is. And it's a great place. Like, if you want to sin and live it up before you die, 
You go to Arizona because, listen, it's a great place to sin because it's a wild party place, especially Scottsdale. And then when you die and go to hell, right, you're going, this isn't so hot down here. I just died in Scottsdale in the middle of July. It was 119 degrees. I'm sorry to say the devil, this is not that hot. <laughs> I'm pretty prepared for this. I am pretty prepared. Um, so Phoenix was good. We had we had fun shows in Phoenix. And then I went over to LA, did some shows over there, did some potties, did a show with Louis C.K. Mm. Um, that was fun to watch him. He always gets an ovation live. It's a weird thing. Yeah. Like whenever he goes up live, I'm sure he doesn't feel much of the cancel. People don't do those things in person. Like I bet you don't, w women don't walk by him and go, <laughs> I think people just go, oh, there's Louis. But you know, even when he was announced on the lineup at the improv that I was on, uh -huh. there was like three comments going like, do better improv. I hate that. Do, do better. better. Yeah, do better. Do better. I, and they were like, I'm concerned for the waitresses. Are the waitresses going to be safe? I'm like, I think they'll be okay. There's other people around. They'll be okay. So those were fun. Um, spent Greek Easter uh, in Addison, in Dallas, Texas. Because then after that, we went to Dallas. But before that, I was able to hang out with John Stamos and Dimitri Martin, which they're two Greeks. And... Um, that was, I guess that was my Greek Easter. I just hung out with them. You guys cook a goat? We didn't cook a goat. We cooked, We did pizza again. John Stamos has a pizza oven, and we, he just made pizzas. It's funny because he just does all the work. It's John Stamos at his house, and he's making pizzas. And we didn't help him clean up either. <laughs> it was at one point where he was just cleaning up, and it started raining, and he, we, were all, we all took cover from the rain, and he was just cleaning up by himself, and I just made a joke. I was like, do you want some help out there? And he was like, no, it's fine. He's getting poured on. And well, I was like, it's real funny that, you know, because he, he was the biggest star there for sure. And he was the only one working. He doesn't have a person for that. He doesn't have a person. For that. He ain't that rich. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, mean, he's rich, but. I thought he might have a butler or something. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think, I think, yeah, I guess th th that level of rich, he might've been that 10 years ago. <laughs> he might've had to at some point have a conversation with his butler. <laughs> <laughs> as the syndication died down, you know, for uh, Full House. <laughs> it's really like, okay, listen, uh, Benson, you've been with us for a long time. Um, you know, I basically hired you once we made that syndication deal and we renegotiated and all the cast set together. That was a glorious day. Um, unfortunately, TV, nobody's watching TV anymore. So uh, we're going to have to let you go, Benson. <laughs> He probably had to let his butler go at some point. I bet there's a lot of people in Hollywood who've had to let their help go. Yeah. Like Emma Stone, a lot of these people are probably having to downsize. <laughs> a lot of actors are probably having to downsize, except for like The Rock and like anyone who's involved in the Fast and Furious <laughs> franchise. There's probably a lot of downsizing going on. You may not have to build a wall, Republicans, because Mexicans may just start going back voluntarily because the work is drying up. <laughs> There just may not be that much landscaping work in LA soon. You may go to LA and just lawns are just lawns are just messy, or they don't even water them anymore and they just turn yellow again because uh, all that stuff is artificial. Nothing can grow there. In fact, there's a drought happening in California right now again, where millions of people are going to have to cut down on their water. Um, so that's not a problem. They probably already cut down a lot on their water based on how many less people there are in L.A. now. Um, those people have moved. They've moved on. They're moved, they've moved to Austin and Nashville and all those places that hate that they're there. <laughs> <laughs> you know they hate they're there when they immediately they, they do an abortion ban. They're like, what do these people love the most? Well, let's take that away from them and try to convince them to go back. Um, Charlie Stevens 13 says there's always work because people are lazy. Um, Stamos would never leave LA. He seems like he's no, he's LA. He's an LA kid yeah. and they're not look, I'm exaggerating. People are working. It's fine. Like there's still work happening in LA, but there's definitely downsizing happening. Mm. There's definitely, people are definitely downsizing, 
You know, they're making cuts, and usually those cuts are going to be their household staff, first and foremost. A few of those people may have to raise their own kids, <laughs> which is wild, dude. That's going to be wild. But, like, those middle-of-the-run actors who don't have, like, a TikTok following or whatever, um, they may have to. That would be a great movie, actually. A great movie idea would be to have, like, a couple of, like, former stars like the internet has taken over and now they got to find work. So uh, they like just show up and start handing in uh, curriculum vitae. <laughs> they just show up with resumes. That would be funny to see like Emma Stone just show up, just show up at Avis <laughs> <laughs> and try to find like, and they're like, well, you're overqualified as like a person, but like, I think people would hire her quickly because they'd be like, there'd be some gravitas to like, Emma Stone selling you a car oh, rental. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like her line, when you got to the airport, her line would be fucking long. Dudes with all cameras and stuff and whatever. <laughs> and then uh, they'd be like, yo, you're, you know, the other guys, then you'd, they'd fire her because they'd be like, this isn't working. Nobody's, people are pretending like they want to rent a car and then they just want a picture. So then you're, now you're back out of work. And the only thing left for you is OnlyFans. That's just the only way. <laughs> I mean, do you think some of them are on OnlyFans under a pseudonym? Could be. Do you think, like, if I was Emma Stone, and now I know Emma Stone's, I'm just using her as an example, okay? I know she's made her millions doing La La Land or whatever. Who would be a great, Christina Ricci would be a mm -hmm. good example of someone who may put on a pink wig and just be on OnlyFans and we may not know it. There may be some of those who we just don't know are on OnlyFans. And if you look real closely, it's Christina. <laughs> you know i mean she's basically i mean did she make huge money somewhere where you can just perpetually live off it not on these gas prices especially in la i was in long island and i filled my wife's tank it was four bucks in la the shit was six, close to six dollars you know everyone used to love elon musk before he bought twitter because he was helping the environment right now people hate them, dog. It just shows you that people's cause, they're not so committed to their causes if they disagree with anything that you're about. And it's really funny to see people against free speech and they're just going like, he doesn't mean that. He just wants to open it up for hate speech. And they're saying that with like zero proof. It's like, hey, maybe he does. Maybe he is free speech, Jesus. Maybe he is. Mark Palmieri said, Jay Harvin is now a crip ever since that L.A. visit. <laughs> so I just don't know. I just don't know what people are doing for money. New sponsor we'd like to welcome to the podcast, Bird Dogs. Jesse loves them. You even were rocking them before they started advertising with us. All last summer I was rocking them. Uh, they're like shorts with a built-in liner that are so comfortable so you don't have to wear drawers. Yeah. It's like basically imagine having comfortable underwear sewn in. If you're a guy who likes to save time or you're on your last pair of undies or you don't want to wear undies and you want to free ball it or you always wish your undies were in your shorts already, Bird Dogs is for you. Am I wrong? Absolutely right. Yes. Correct. And it's so comfortable, dude. Insane. It's a combination of like drawers and shorts or mm -hmm. pants or whatever. It's uh, like a bathing suit with really comfortable lining. Yes, but it's, they're shorts. Right, right. Yes. But you know how like bathing suits have that mesh lining? And yes. And if you wear too much, it gets all chafy and nasty. Yeah, imagine if that was really the most comfortable thing you've ever put your balls in. Exactly. Right. So birddogs.com, promo code FUMES. Okay, with the promo code FUMES, you get a free, you get a free bird dogs dad hat with your pair of bird dogs. So get yourself that free hat. Even if you're not a dad, uh, get it gets you downstairs ready for summer. I just read it because I think that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> they wrote that in, but that's funny. It gets you downstairs ready. You got to be downstairs ready. Your balls and your dick and your butt need to be comfortable. Uh, you won't want to take these things off. I mean, they are so comfortable. Jesse already, you were singing their praises to me before I even knew what they were. I told you to get a pair. You did tell me to get a pair. Birddogs.com. Happy to have you. Go to birddogs.com right now. Enter the promo code FUMES. They have such a comfortable liner. They're stretchy. You can wear them anywhere. They look good. Birddogs.com. Promo code FUMES. 
Guys, let's talk about skincare, fellas. It's not just for the ladies, okay? All right? If your skincare routine is just washing your face with the bar of soap like me or shower gel, um, then it's time to level up your skincare game, okay? It doesn't make you a metrosexual to have good skin. Or even if it does, there ain't nothing wrong with a metrosexual, okay? They got good skin. Do you want to have good, good skin? Well, Lumen's got you covered. With Lumen, you get the highest quality products. All their products aim to help you with acne scars, uh, those under eye dark circles, which really have worked for me. Wrinkles, sun damage, dry skin, oily skin, whatever your problem is. Uh, it's very easy. I love how they do it. All you have to do is take a two minute quiz on their website, on their website, and they will tell you exactly what routine is best for you based on your skincare needs. This, the quiz is very fun. It's interactive. All their products come with instructions, so it's extremely easy, and it'll help protect your skin from potential damage from the sun, future acne, whatever it may be. All their products are made using only natural ingredients. That's very important, and these ingredients actually work. That's the thing. They, uh, they have licorice root extract, rose flower oil, charcoal powder, ginger green tea, and charcoal. These are all natural elements that are great for your skin that I'm sure the native people used at one point. And that's why their skin is look good. I mean, that's why their skin looks good, dog. Guys, I swear skincare shouldn't be that complicated. Uh, and it shouldn't be something to dread. Um, so go right now to lumenskin.com slash fumes and get your free trial of Lumen's products. That's lumenskin.com dot com slash fumes level up your skincare game right now guys i know i know what amber heard's doing for money she got some she she what she did is what you call what's that when you go a little too far when you you know what i mean when you when you bite the hands that feet you like you're you're if you should have just left it alone like, what is that called? When someone goes like a little, like they fuck up a perfect thing. She, that's what she did. She had a perfect thing, okay? She shit in this guy's bed. <laughs> <laughs> she fucking shit in his bed. She fucking yelled on hit at him when he took off his own boots and, and didn't allow her to take off his boots. She fucking yelled at him. She got called a fat ass, which is my favorite quote. From, do you ever hear that? Do you hear any of the audio? No, no. She says something. He goes, shut up, fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's suing her, right? He's suing her. That's what I'm saying, and I'll explain why. First of all, it's just a, it's, he's, he was like 50 at the time, and she was like in her 20s. So it's just basically a high school relationship. Everyone had a relationship like this in high school. Like, fuck you. To and you try to say the meanest thing to each other. Thank God we grew up when we grew up, because like we did and said things that just weren't recorded. I mean, thank God. Oh my God! Every day, I thank God. I mean, dude, Matt, the things that I said to ex-girlfriends and that they said to me when we were fighting in high school—if that shit was recorded, forget about it. We'd all be done, and that's everyone from the '80s and '90s. Um, so their whole relationship apparently was just. A podcast. <laughs> <laughs> they just podcasted their fights. Everything is recorded. They were just recording each other constantly. And I get it because, you know, I guess Johnny Depp married. Look, you get what you deserve, dog. If there is, this is the best anti-drug ad I've ever seen. Do not do drugs because you're going to end up with a woman who shits in your bed and steals all your fucking money and then you get fired from all your franchises and everyone thinks you're a wife beater. Right? When she, it seems like she hit him a lot too. It seems like it was one of those. And there was a part in the trial where her attorney goes, wouldn't you say that you're a lot bigger than, you're a lot bigger than Miss Heard? And he goes, I wouldn't say that. And then when you look at them walking, you're like, yeah, I mean, he's not that big, dog. <laughs> Amber Heard is 5'7". Johnny Depp's probably, what, like 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, he's, he's a squeaky, skinny, like rock and rolly type of drug addict. I don't think he would get the better of her necessarily. Yeah, she might whoop that ass. Yeah, and supposedly she was throwing bottles at him and shit. The f I mean, I get it, dog. Look, I know what happened. Okay, Johnny, 
<laughs> there's a cost for everything, my friend. And I know why you got into this. Because you you know when they first got together, it was what they call sizzling honeydew. Sizzling honeydew. A fumeless, sizzling, honeydew type of taste. And you're just going, this is too good to be true. Guess what? It always is. It always is. If you ever catch yourself saying to yourself, this is too good to be true. This is the best thing I've ever experienced. Guess what? There's a tsunami coming. There's a tsunami coming. Because this is earth where everything is balanced and everything has a cost and nothing is good. No moment is great. I don't care how much CBD you take. Your balls are going to itch. You're going to have an itch here. You're going to have a scratch here. You're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to have an insecure thought. You're going to have to take a shit. Something is always going to be wrong. Okay, right now, the back of my kneecaps, are I, I, I have a heat rash behind them. But I'm muscling through it because I'm used to the discomfort of life. Most of us have been with that type of girl where you're going like, oh my God, this completes it. She's acting. It's not her. Because anyone real is not that great. So if you find yourself going like this person's great, it's because they want you to think that because they have some agenda for themselves. What could be her agenda? I don't know. She, she's, she was dating a woman before she met Johnny Depp, and then she dates one of the biggest movie stars on the planet as a run-of-the-mill, nobody-knows-who-she-is actor, actress, whatever the fuck you want to call her. What could be her motivation? What could be her motivation, Johnny? As the great Robert Kelly said, never marry someone with a headshot. <laughs> what do you think makes an actor an actor? They're fucking crazy. They're acting. So he fucked around and found out. And he was on drugs. So that made it even worse. His decision making is not great. Also, when you have like $100, $200 million, your decision making is not great as it is because nobody's going to tell you the truth. You know there was a bunch of friends that he had who wanted to say it. They're like, yo, Johnny. But they, you know, you're just around yes men at that point. Everyone's being obsequious because they just want to hang around Johnny Depp. If you're lucky enough to be in Johnny Depp's circle, do you think you're going to be the one that's, that lets you know that she also shit in your bed? Are you going to be one to tell, hey, Johnny, I, look, there's no dogs around here, man, and Jason Rouse isn't here, and I woke up, and there was a human turd in my bed. You're not going to, it can only be one person. It was your wife it was your, or your girlfriend. Nobody's going to say it. Nobody's going to tell Johnny Depp that, yo, I think you made a mistake. They're just going to let it happen. And of course, Johnny Depp didn't see it because he was head over heel with that honeydew, that sweet fruit, that nectar that was clouding his judgment. And um, they settled for a whole bunch of money, of course, because... He was suing her for 50 mil. No, but first they divorced. Oh, the first time, yeah. And she got a shit ton of money. And, oh, you're right, right. Yeah, she got a shit ton of money. So he wanted. he was just like, I just want to... That's what these guys do. These guys do like dog. If you're a rich person and some girl like you had, you have a bad date with some girl, some girl like gets a lawyer and just says that you just go like, I'll just give her a million dollars just so this doesn't become a trial because I don't, you know, the accusations that that can also happen. You know, that also can happen. There's a lot of motivation for that too, as well. A little hush money, a little hush money. I, I don't want, you know, I don't want to deal with this. And of course, all those people who do those kind of fake accusations for money and make, to get that hush money, they f muddle it for all the people who have legitimate, uh, you know, assault or, you know, bad things happening stories. I'm not good with words today. Um, so they, get, they take a little hush money. So I'm sure Johnny, who you, I'm, I'm watching this thing. All the audio he's got, there's plenty of evidence that she's batshit fucking crazy. That's why the whole internet's against her. Everyone's against her. She's hired security because she's claiming she's getting death threats. She's not getting any death threats from any dudes. So <laughs> there you go. And she also got caught lying on a few things. The police who showed up, 
uh, she and her friend said that the fight with the, the the fight that they eventually broke up from supposedly like the house was turned inside out according to her he was throwing things everywhere and the cops body cams and them saying nothing there was no marks on her there was nothing thrown she's been caught lied on a lying on a few things she's been caught lying on a few occasions um but you know it's like he settled it he goes all right let's just get this divorce done he gave her a boatload of money because that's fair. Um, just here, take it. Just take everything I worked for, you know? And of course she takes it. And then of course, I th she said as a PR move, I remember that she was donating all her money for like victims. And of course, all you gotta do is tweet that. Right. I mean, I did a fundraiser once. I gave most of the money <laughs> to the cause, but I peeled a little off the top for myself. <laughs> as a payment, I did the show. Right? So she's, do you think she really gave all her Johnny Depp money away? Not a snowball's chance in hell, my friend. <laughs> Not a snowball's chance in hell. Not a white guy in Scottsdale, Arizona's chance in not getting skin cancer's chance in hell. He paid her to shit in his bed. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> Thank you from Dom the Destroyer. So he gave her all this money. I don't know. I don't remember what the uh, original settlement was, but he gave her all this money with all this audio proof that she would hit him a lot and all that stuff. They just divorced. She said, I, and then that's when she started fucking going a little too far because the me too era was happening. And she was like, I want more attention. That's what these people want. This is narcissistic love. It's a narcissistic town. So what's the move to do right now that the cultural winds are swaying in the Me Too sales? She goes, I'm donating all of this settlement to women's uh, charities for battered women or whatever. And Johnny's probably sitting there going, you bitch. That was strike number one. You're insinuating that fucking I was beating you when really you were beating me. Um. And then he, she, and then a, and then a, an, an English Gazette publishes and calls him a wife beater, and he sues and he loses, he lost. Then, oh, they do that after. This is where she goes too far. Yeah. All I was saying, I lost that point because I'm I'm t I'm off today. We've been rusty from these single episode podcasts. To be honest with you, single person podcast. I was saying she hired security. This is how you know Amber Heard is a little bit of a liar. There is not one guy. There is not one guy on this planet that is angry or wants to hurt Amber Heard. Every single guy on this planet wants Amber Heard to shit in their bed. <laughs> Every single guy is going, I will let that woman shit on my head. <laughs> Every single guy is in love with Amber Heard. She is like the beautiful Tanya Harding. <laughs> Guys don't care. Guys aren't sticking up for Johnny Depp. You know, you know who is sticking up for Johnny Depp? Every single woman on the planet. So if anyone's making death threats against Amber Heard, it's fellow females who love Johnny Depp <laughs> and are going, how could you do that to Johnny? He's such a sweet old. And they're crazy too. Cause like, yeah, I guess he's a sweet guy, but he's a fucking degenerate drug addict. <laughs> but they love them some Johnny. It's true. I didn't even notice this case until I heard about the shit in the bed. Yeah. The shit in the bed and guys are loving it. Guys are going, and every guy's doing their scenario now going like, look, okay. If you lost 10 mil and she shit in your bed, <laughs> would you fuck her for a week? And every guy's going, absolutely, she's a piece. Because Amber Heard is next level hot. I mean, she's like stone cold for Rome. She'd be, if I, if I had my own harem in Rome, I'd make her my wife. I'd, I'd steal her from her family and tell her parents, I'm sorry, there's nothing I could do. She's for Rome. But she, I would make her my wife and she would ruin my life. <laughs> she would ruin... She would ruin the empire of Rome. She would drive me so crazy I'd marry my horse. That's what happened to Nero, probably. Is he met a bitch like Amber Heard who, who's puss puss and the nectar was so honey too sweet that he just lost his fucking mind. So I know you got security and everything, Amber Heard, but let's just be honest. 
It's because you got a couple of death threats from chicks who are upset that you got a chance to bang Johnny Depp and you threw a bottle at him because they would never throw a bottle at him. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how he said that it was oppressive that she wanted to take off his boots. It's like, come on. That was one of the things. Like She demanded when he came home, she wanted to take off his boots. He's just not the guy who wears sneakers. He's fucking one of those rock yeah, and roll right. guys. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I want to take off your boots and hand you a glass of wine. And somehow that was evidence of abuse. I was like, that sounds, do you know what I would do to have my wife, when I come home, take my shoes off and hand me a drink of anything? <laughs> she just comes home and tells me to be quiet, the baby's sleeping. <laughs> It's very specific, though. She wants to take off his boots and hand him a glass of wine. Someone made a joke. and said, Yeah, someone said, wait, guys, I'm behind. Who's Amber? You know exactly who Amber Heard is. Uh, I, can th I can think of a more important trial that should have been televised. What's that? Dom the Destroyer says, I'd love to get abused by her. There you go. There you have it. That's what every guy's thinking. Emma Stone will need to make an NFT of her labia to make ends meet. Thank you from the gentleman and scholar named Viapper Missing. <laughs> Did you think he had to really analyze the shit to make sure it wasn't the dog? <laughs> it's a good point. Like, can you be sure it wasn't the dog? Because in the trial, he's like, I know what dog shit looks like. It's like, well, I kind of think dog, a, a little dog shit kind of, I would imagine, looks like a girl's shit. I don't think it would be like... It could have been a dude who just snuck in his house and took a shit on his bed, right? You never know. You never fucking know. There's a turd burglar out there. But she went a little too far. Wait, but, how did the shit story come out? So it's come out in the trial now where he Johnny Depp said, you know, he woke up and there was, he called it human fecal matter. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I knew it wasn't the dogs because they're small and I don't think they could climb up on the bed or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So he's saying shit on the bed. So she was gone, but she left the shit. She left the shit for him. She was mad at him. Now, where she, where she went too far uh, was she wrote this article. She wrote this op-ed, I think, in the Washington Post where she basically, and that's what the trial's about, right? So the trial's about this op-ed where she is kind of vague, but everyone kind of knows what she's talking about because there was so much drama around their divorce and there was a couple of audio leaks, et cetera, et cetera. And then, then the, the UK publication was after that. So it all started with her doing, she could have not done this, but because this, this, the sales of Me Too were taking, were the wind of Me Too was taking the sales that way, she was like, let me ride this, let me ride this wind. And she wrote this op-ed, not naming him by name, but obviously everyone knows who she's talking about. The funny thing is now is she's pulling an Alex Jones, going, it wasn't about him. Because he's suing her for defamation because of that article. Because that article is what caused the other article in England, which he sued and lost, but yeah, also for him to lose all his movies yeah. and all that stuff. So he's suing her for 50 mil. She's counter suing, of course, for 100. Of course. <laughs> of course. So uh, Giannis is the new Jon Stewart show, not Stephen Colbert because he's garbage. I'll take it. Um, so that's what the trial's about, is this article right here. Johnny Depp didn't lose any film rules as a result of Amber Heard's op-ed couple's agents say i doubt that yeah. he was canceled as jack as captain jack right from that that's the main one that was like the big money franchise and that's it the, he's the whole movie in that. he's the whole movie and they fired him i wonder why they fired him they fired him because of that so but you know she's backtracking and then she's going like it wasn't about him it's like really amber so then who was it about but you know well, you know, now karma's catching up to her because now the whole tr people are finding out that she took a shit in his bed. It would have all gone away if she just took the money and went away. Because this is, a, this is not a clear-cut case of, like, being a battered wife. You listen to those audios and you're going, like, 
This is a crazy teenage, toxic, narcissistic relationship between two people who are out of their fucking minds. It's a high school relationship between people who do not have adult developed brains, right? He got into the relationship because she was hot. She got into the relationship because he was Johnny Depp. Okay, that's how the world works. There was no love there. They all saw what they wanted to see because they were the ideal versions of what the greedy, narcissistic self that they are wanted. That's what it is. People like that don't want to work. They don't want to have a real relationship. You think Johnny Depp wants to have a real relationship? He can blame it on his mother all he fucking wants. And then he was going like, oh my God, I'm married to my mother. She's fucking 25 and you're 50. Grow the fuck up, Johnny. It wasn't your mother. You were dating a fucking person straight out of college. He's like almost 30 years older than her. He's like, oh my God, I'm in a relationship with my abusive mother. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about, Johnny? You didn't marry her because she reminded you of your mother. You reminded her because her pussy tasted like fucking honey. Let's just call it what it is. Let's just call it what it is. And why did she marry him? Because he's, he's fucking hot. And he's the biggest movie star on the planet. Okay? No disrespect, but she didn't fucking seek out Simon Rex. Who's great. He's a great. I say he's just no, he's no Johnny Depp, is what I'm saying. Amber Heard had her height, she had her height set on the top, baby. And who knows, maybe Simon Rex fucked her. Kid's got a big dick. I think he started his career with a little masturbatory porn where I think he was stroking his piece. I think I watched it years ago and I was like, damn, that kid's got a nice glue gun. No disrespect. But I'm saying Johnny Depp is Johnny Depp. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to slight anyone. I'm just saying Johnny Depp is Johnny Depp is the top of the food chain. She knew what was going on. So I don't know. I hope this trial goes on for three years. I'm enjoying every moment of it. And isn't it funny that it's being aired? Oh, it's it's like on television. Oh, yeah. Like Court TV has never seen bigger ratings. Like people are just watching Court TV. <laughs> and then Court TV, like we just live in a country now where content is everything. It puts money in everyone's pocket. It's all advertising dollars for us to consume. We don't produce anything. It's all consumer dollars. It's all consumption. So Court TV is getting big ratings because they're airing this shit, making content. People are watching it because all they do is consume content. They don't live anymore. They don't produce anymore. And then they buy the shit that they see or the advertisers think they're going to buy it. I mean, the, they are stretching this into, I mean, they, they have body language experts on. They have everything. It's like watching the E! channel for a red carpet if the red carpet was a defamation suit. Is basically what Court TV is doing right now. So Johnny Depp scores a big win over Amber Heard as judge re rejects her bid to throw out his defamation. So, so that that was, I guess that was before, right? Yeah, it was before yeah, they went to trial. Yeah. Ago, yeah. <clears throat> and they're doing it in Virginia. So you know they both are like, I don't want to fucking be in Virginia right now. And I don't know why it's Virginia. I'm sure there's a reason. Um, Yanni really talking about this BS and not really, and they might let you have some advertisements. I don't know what that means, Kenny D. Talariaco. Yanni keep talking about this BS and not reality, and they might let you have some advertisements. Oh, he's trying to say, like, I'm talking about this as opposed to reality. He wants you to talk about Ukraine? He wants me to talk about Ukraine. And, oh, he thinks I'm being like a Hollywood shell because I'm talking about... The John, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm sorry. Okay, let's talk about the real stuff. They're hot and children <laughs> inside of Disney's waterfalls. <laughs> and that doesn't go to say that there is some weird stuff going. I mean, Disney did get caught. Like a lot of its employees were doing some stuff. But I think that just means that that stuff is all over the place. And then, of course, they were supporting. They were came out against the bill in Florida. And so that's why Governor DeSantis get bad, got mad. I will say this. I will say this. I did read more about this. And it's not really a don't say gay bill. That was, it was named that mm -hmm. by like newscasters predictably on like, let's just, you know, you got to go mainstream. What mainstream really means like kind of left-leaning outlets. Because the bill's basically just saying, hey, from this age to this age, 
you can't talk about gender stuff or sexuality. I think it's like kindergarten to third grade. Or yeah, and like. I think that's the extent of it, right? And then I think they just dubbed it. I think newscasters in the mainstream media just basically gave it the moniker of don't say gay bill, which is a catchy kind of thing. But that's not that doesn't really encapsulate what it is, right? It's kind of like just from kindergarten to third grade, grade don't don't talk about sex, <laughs> which I get, dog. I mean, I get if you if you were to take if you were to just talk to any normal person who's trying to stay out of politics, and you said, "Hey, this is what this bill's about," don't you think most people would say, "Like, yeah, I kind of agree with that," yeah, right? Maybe the little ABCs, one, two, threes. Let's yeah, maybe it. let's keep let's keep it to the ABCs <laughs> and one, two, threes till third grade. <laughs> let's let's not talk about gender identity, you know, and. I would also say, yeah, maybe that's not your place. Maybe it's like the family's place, but then they'll go, all these families, you know, they don't want their, they want to repress. But like, yeah, I mean, that's their business. I mean, you know, not everyone's got a perfect family. That doesn't mean that you, you should fucking talk to the kids. But also, I don't know if there should be a law saying you can't talk to the kids about this shit. What does that mean? If you break the, if some kid comes to you and goes like, hey, I'm having this identity crisis and you talk to them, does that mean you go to jail now? I mean, what the fuck is going on in this country? <laughs> what the fuck is going on between the craziness? It's just craziness, react, crazy reaction, craziness, crazy reaction, craziness, crazy reaction. One thing to the next, one thing to the next, crazy, crazy reaction, and back again. I don't even know how to comment on this shit. I don't even understand it. I don't know. And Oklahoma has banned, the Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma governor has banned non-binary birth certificates. <laughs> Again, it's crazy and crazy reaction. First of all, why are there non-binary birth certificates? A kid is non-binary when he's born? Is that So what are we doing now? I just don't understand what we're doing. We don't we want to let the make the kid decide? So his genital are we are we getting to the point where the left side is trying to say that genitalia doesn't matter at all? <laughs> And I love when they say like gender and sex are, have nothing to do with it. So then why would you change the sex into the other one if it has nothing to do with sex? I'm just confused. Because you're picking the other sex and you're saying sex is a construct, but then why are you picking the other sex if it's a construct? <sighs> Transgender use make up a tiny fraction of kids in the U.S., has estimated less than 2%. 2% is a lot, dude. That's a lot. Out of kids? Was yeah, it out, of ki of out of high school students? Identify as transgender? Isn't that a lot, 2% uh, as it, transgender? And the number's going up, right? The number's going up because it's like... It's becoming a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing you can do. So I guess I would expect the number to go up a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. And I, I when it comes to these statistics, I mean, what do they do? Do they go to every place and poll? Every, how do they know? Yeah. How do they fucking know what it is? Um, I think Yanni is transgender. Um, what is a non-binary birth certificate? I think you can't put the letter X. So if, so if someone's born, so if they just saying like, if the parents choose to just not to go non-binary, right. Or if it's intersex, which that almost never happens. Yeah. That's very rare. That's very rare. Uh, so if it has both genitalia, usually they pick one, right? But if they want to keep it, maybe there should be an other box for those la few. Is that what the non-binary box is? I guess I, I kind of agree with that. Then there should be maybe another box for those one or two kids. Well, I guess some parents are going to let their kid decide as they get older, right? Kind of like your joke. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so they just want to stop that. So this is an extreme reaction because they're just like, because the other side keeps pushing that. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're pushing it in the schools and stuff like that. And that's what the other side's claiming. I don't know if it's getting pushed in the schools. A lot. I, I, all I know is what I see online. I don't know too many parents. Like, do you know any parents who are like, is this thing like in the schools all over the place? Like, I don't know. I haven't been to school in a while. I know two parents who are going through it. 
I you know, two you. parents who are, who are, what do you mean going through it? Their kids are. Oh, their kids are trans. Yeah. That's a, that's weird to know two parents. Mm-hmm. That means it's happening a lot. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple of star, I think there's a couple of like actors who have like trans kids now and stuff. It is happening a lot. Um, I say, let them do it. I, you know, I don't see a kid wants to transition. It's just tough on the parents. One parent loves it. Yeah. Like, uh, like tweeting about it, posting on Instagram. So, you know, it's making it about that. That's also a way to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's another way to deal with it is mm-hmm. to just kind of like, <laughs> you almost have to become a cheerleader for it mm-hmm. to like not think about it too much. I mean, it's a, to me, it's a little much. It's like almost like who's, who's, who's getting attention out of this? You know, it's almost like a way for her to. Right. For her, for the parent to be like. Mm-hmm. I'm a hero, right? And then the other parent is just kind of struggling with it. Yeah, yeah, he's big struggling, time. big he, time struggling. Yeah, yeah, he hates it. He does. Yeah, it's kind of weird for him. Mm-hmm. He's got to like call her. her, her yeah. Is it a he, male to female or female to male? It's an adventure every time. <laughs> it's an adventure. Oh, so it's not more of a non-binary situation. Getting used to all the terms is really difficult. Yeah. It's, it's not because it's, it's neither. And they scold you too. Like something's wrong with you. Oh, they're waiting to pounce. Yeah. They wait to pounce on you. Like you fucking evil mm-hmm. boomer bitch. You don't <laughs> get it. I'm trying to shake off my genitals and become an angel asshole. <laughs> fucking let me, you know. Yeah. It's a, th- it's a thing. There's no way you can s- categorize it as anything but extreme. That's the thing. That's the issue is that they want to categorize it as the norm. They want to make it normal when it'll never be normal. It'll never be normal biologically. The a majority of people will never be trans. So that's what I mean by that. Don't misconstrue it, okay? Listen to the whole clip. <laughs> <laughs> meaning it'll never be the norm. It'll always be, I guess maybe not if you don't want to use the word extreme. I, was, I wasn't using the word extreme as a moral judgment. I was saying it'll be on the fringe. It'll be the minority, the vast minority. What? It'll be the outlier. It'll always be the outlier. 2%, even though that's a lot more than it used to be, is still, you know, that's very small. That's very, very small. It'll never be the majority or else, you know, Or else things, I, maybe it will be. <laughs> maybe in the future it will be. You know, who knows? But I guess the, the, the thing, you can't, I don't think you can, I don't think you can rationalize a way that they're trying to make it more of a norm thing. They want to make more, like if any kid has any question, they just go, it's okay to transition. Don't kill yourself. It's like they hijack you and go, the kid will kill itself. Itself, his or her. I don't know which to call it, so I'm calling it it for lack of a fucking understanding of what their pronoun is. The kid will kill itself, and they just go like that, and you just go, okay, fucking give it the needles, give it the hormone blockers. It, it'll have irreversible effects in some ways, but fucking do it. I don't want to be a part of this kid's suicide. They're like holding everyone hostage with the suicide thing, and then on the other side, they're reacting to that. You know. They're reacting to that. And of course you have people on both sides, one side who just hates it and doesn't believe in it and just thinks it's a mental illness. And those are the extreme ex- extremists. And then the other side, you have people who just want to like turn everyone trans. So those people are in it too. And you know, somehow they're, they're kind of the engine. They've become the engines. And I think I know why. When everyone is free and comfortable, when everything's free and comfortable and there's no cops around or nobody big and strong on a, on a subway car, When someone is loud, everyone's quiet and they just kind of dictate the environment of what's going on. And all the quiet people want them is to just leave them alone. That's it. They just want to make it to their destination. That's it. Nobody's going to stop them. Nobody's going to get in, get involved in the crazy. And so that's where we are now. We're at a place where we're so free and comfortable and there's no police around on that subway car. There's no big, strong people who are going to hurt you if you keep yelling. So people are just yelling and 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 yelling. Yeah, the problem with that is eventually someone's going to snap and they're going to go, okay, we're going to make laws about this now. We're going to make laws. And so 
It's an inevitable, predictable reaction. Instead, I guess another way you could have handled it is just like not talking, not making it such a public thing where every people are getting on Tic Tac and going like, okay, so I teach my kid what my pronouns are. I like to educate. And they're so fucking condescending when mm. they go, okay, so you don't know. So let me, it's like, you're not teaching me trigonometry, dick. <laughs> you're teaching me some made up shit that you just made up. That there's a hundred pronouns or whatever there is. You're not better than me because you know the pronoun Zuby or whatever it is. <laughs> so the other thing would be like, they're not out there going like, hey, you didn't know, so let me, it's not that hard <laughs> to take people's feelings into consideration. <laughs> Just give me, give me someone asked you to call them to do it. <laughs> Another way would just be like to handle it privately and, you know, oh, this person's trans. They have this, uh, this is how they've solved their gender dysphoria and they've transitioned. You go like, all right, that's a trans person. Everyone's pretty okay with that. Or the majority of people are pretty okay with that. And they just go like that. And then if some kid has an issue, you, you make sure. You go to therapy, you make sure, you make sure. And it gets to a certain point, you know, you decide after long adjudication, after long talks about it with the parents and everybody, you know, that that may be the right course of action, that you make sure the kid's old enough to understand that some of this stuff is irreversible, uh, you know. But I get why there's controversy because it's one of these new issues that is a gray area. It's like abortion. It's like a gray area. It's like, obviously, even if you're on the left, you go like, I don't want anyone having an abortion at seven months, eight months. You know, it's a gray area. You're going, but then, and then you go, well, then three's okay. And you're going like, I guess that's not okay either. But four, like, I get it. But I also want women's rights to choose. It's a messy fucking thing. It's a messy fucking thing. So, uh, you can't make sense of it. I, I think I make a mistake sometimes trying to make sense of this stuff. Why am I not just making fun of it? Absolutely. Yeah, that's my problem. This podcast is probably boring because I'm trying to make sense of it. I'm trying to understand it. What is there to understand? People are out of their fucking mind and they're having a blast. Let them have a blast. Everyone's having a fucking party right now. And some people are upset that those people are making too much noise. And then they're fucking starting a party of their own. And it you could just watch both parties and go fight, 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 fight. And I mean, is there anything better than a fight video? We have to talk about things. Is it, It's called freedom. Thank you, Charlie Stevens. You know it's a guy who takes himself too seriously if his screen name is his real name. I want to I see GLR76. <laughs> oh, man. So, I don't know. I just know that grooming's bad. I know pedophilia's bad. I know war is bad. Um, for the most part, um, I know murder is bad. I know rape is bad. Everything else is kind of negotiable, right? Even assault, even, I guess assault is bad because if you call it assault, that means it was like unprovoked, but a beat down, beat downs aren't always bad. Mike Tyson beat the shit out of that guy in the plane. There's not one person who sided with the kid. Also, another indication, like, if this was a white supremacist country, people would be like, look, look at Mike Tyson, a black man assaulted a white. I think even white supremacists, wherever they may be, are going like, I'm so glad that guy got his ass kicked. That's one of those moments that kind of supersedes you, whatever bigotry you have because you just watch it and go like, oh, it was glorious to watch that annoying guy get his ass kicked because you can identify. Because underneath all the bullshit, we're all just people. And those are those moments that kind of break those delusions of hate that those people have when they can just see Mike Tyson quietly sitting there and there's this drunk idiot bothering him. And I think he threw a water bottle at one point. And... Um, I think we'd all like to have seen the beating be a little more. <laughs> I think we were all disappointed. In it. I haven't heard one person or seen one article or one tweet in the entire metaverse saying like Mike Tyson assaulted that guy. I mean, I think even the cops are going to be like, dude, you know, I don't even think there's, you know, he's just, he might get a medal for it. Um, so it's negotiable. 
Everything is negotiable besides a few things that you got to be hardline about. I guess even sexuality and gender is negotiable to a certain extent. Who knows? The pandemic certainly it's over in some places and whether it's over or not is up is negotiable. I mean, that's still negotiable depending on who you talk to. People are going, are you crazy? You're putting people's lives at risk. And then you know someone who catches this new variant. And they're like, yeah, it was like a mild cold. And you're like, all right, I think it's over, dog. I think at this point, I mean, Jared fucking had COVID the whole time and fucking, well, you know, he didn't get tested, so he didn't know, but he gave it to Jesse. What were you down? Seven days? Big deal. Big deal. Big fucking deal. Yeah, it wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad at all. No, a little sore throat, a little fever. Uh, go to patreon.com for the uh, bonus episode. And um, now let's uh, get into some of our uh, small business sponsors. We want you guys to support. We got a few really good ones, and you guys should be checking their stuff out. So, guys, as you know, want to give a shout out, of course. Uh, it's the water we have in the studio now all the time. Freaking cold mountain spring water. No plastic, aluminum fucking bottle. Keeps it nice and cold when you put it in the fridge. You don't got to deal with plastic, which shrinks your taint. Uh, you know, all the plastic comes from China. None of this stuff comes from China. Completely recyclable. Good for the environment. And it stays freaking cold. Go to freaking cold spring water. That's freaking, no G, freaking cold spring and order yourself a case straight to your house. This is your new water right here. Freaking cold. Guys, also want to give a shout out to brooklyncannery.com. These sodas are incredible. Also, you get 15% off your next order at brooklyncannery.com using the promo code Giannis Pappas, all one word. You get your key lime, jalapeno, delicious, amaretto cola, all the flavors they have. It's completely natural. The calories are low and there's no like artificial sweeteners and they're delicious. That's the thing. They're delicious and they're not that bad for you at all, which is amazing. I mean, I'm addicted to these things. So brooklyncannery.com if you're a soda fan, but you also don't want to be fat and you want to keep your feet. <laughs> if you want to get eye surgery and you're in the New York area, there's only one place my fans go. That's ocnyi.com. Or you can call 646-543-9474 and go check out Dr. Ragusa in Astoria, Queens, and he will give you LASIK eye surgery. So you want to go take it, get, get, you want to go, you, you thinking about getting LASIK? There you go. You get 10% off LASIK by just mentioning, just mentioning Long Days or Giannis Pappas. He'll take care of you. He'll know exactly what you're talking about. And uh, so if you're in New York and you want LASIK, go. He's got great reviews. I checked online. And um, so you're in good hands and you get a little discount. Long Shore Coffee, thank God for these people because uh, I love getting my coffee now for free. And I love the coffee. So longshorecoffee.com, 15% off at checkout with the promo code FUMES. Longshore Coffee, it's a small batch coffee roastery in Providence, Rhode Island. They offer premium blends. The coffee is absolutely delicious. From single origin coffees from around the world, they got different roasts, medium, all different flavors. I'm a boss babe guy. That's my favorite. If you like medium roast, light roast, whatever you have, go check the different types of coffee. Order yours. You're going to enjoy it because it is freshly brewed, fresh. Well, you brew it, but it's freshly roasted and grinded. It's amazing. Longshorecoffee.com for your coffee. If you, if you are a fan of this podcast, I expect that you're drinking Longshore Coffee just like I am, if you want to be like like old Yanni. Guys, got to give a shout out to Nate Linder. NateLinder.com for all your social media needs. This guy will take your social media game to the next level. Will help you out with the algorithms, with YouTube, Amazon, all that stuff. Uh, social media advertising is a whole thing, dude. You need a guy like this to help you or your business boom in 2022. So go to natelinder.com, check out his rates, consult with him, and let him help you take your social media game to the next level. Love you, Nate. We should just call Nate live on the podcast and have him do his, what he's gonna, we'll do that ne next episode. We'll just call him yeah. and he'll give us his consulting right there. <laughs>
Chris Minetti, okay, you know the deal. South Jersey and Philly. If you need to get a check cast, go see uh, Chris Minetti at Minetti Financial Services at 215-750-3730. Bring your check there. He'll cash it. Simple as that. Aaron Lee for the free dot US. All things music in Hawaii. They list all the shows happening in Hawaii, new bands, music, everything. It's an organization dedicated to providing artists from Hawaii a place to develop their craft and be seen. So if you're an artist in Hawaii who wants to get a stage, contact them on their website. Go peruse. If you want to find out about music uh, and, and bands and shows, if you're going on vacation in Hawaii, you live in Hawaii, or if you're a music fan, forthefree.us. Guys, we got a new small business shout out. Welcome P305, maybe that's Miami, 305 PLP Media Services. They offer affordable rates in Miami. I was right, the 305, yo. The 305, son. Uh, they have experienced professionals that will create a video that meets your needs and budget, offer a wide range of services, including professional videography, production, post-production, content creation. So whether you need to produce engaging and effective specialized technical training videos for your new employees, or you need a creative marketing video for social media, or you just need a film to film an important conference speaker or, uh, or meeting, they've got you covered. So email them at info at 305plp.com or call or text us, meaning them, at 786-548-CA money sign H, which is 786-548-2274. Go check them out at Vimeo at Vimeo.com slash 305PLP. Um, check out their portfolio. You can find them on Facebook, 305 PLP. Uh, so if you need any videography, any type of editing, anything, hit them up and uh, let them take care of you. And of course, my man from San Antonio, my brother who came to the show, Jared, love you to death. This is a legit, legit fucking guy. And a legit business, exclusive autoshipping.com. If you are moving you, your car anywhere in the country, I think they do global. So get your free quote at ExclusiveAutoShipping.com if you need to move your car anywhere. All right, I want to welcome our newest Patreon members at Patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Please go join Yanni Long Days, Patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days, and access your additional episode every week. We have a lot of fun on there, and we love your support. It's required. Subscribe to your comedy, man, the comedy you love. So want to welcome our newest members to the Fediverse, our long haulers. Give it up for Corey, Corey Durham, Julie Morton Q, Nathan Cohen, Nick Mullaney, James Van Aiken. Wait, is that the, the Nick Mullaney? Nick, no, that's John Mullaney. Oh, yeah. Me. It could be his brother. <laughs> <It's> his brother. <laughs> then we got James Van Aiken, Dakota Star. Dakota Star is a good porn name. Oh, hell yeah. Dakota Star. That name, is that a girl or a guy? Who cares? Yeah, I mean, that name just got, got me a little pewing. That's a dude. It's a dude. Oh, yeah. I got stro I got, I got fucking catfished. That is <laughs> Dakota Star. Darren or, or Densnick? Or Densnick? Darren or Densnick? Oh, Desnick. Darren Odesnik, Nicole, the obese piece. <laughs> <laughs> Big girls get love too, girl. <laughs> then we got uh, Grow Woodlands, Alex Roca or Raka, uh, Brian, what is that, Pylon? Yeah, close enough. Yeah, Brian Pylon. Palin. Palin or Brian Pylon, Michael Walsh, Casey Duff, sounds like a catcher's name, Ryan Becker, sounds like a pitcher's name. Uh, Bill Combs, sounds like a first baseman. <laughs> and Josh Scrota? Yep. Is Scrota with an exclamation point? No, nah, it's Scrotal. Oh, Josh Scrotal. So that's it, right? That's it. All right, welcome, guys. We really appreciate you over at patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. And guess what? We will see you next week. It's been a long